Same thing is true in a business as it is in wealth building. The mistake a lot of people make is they think wealth in creating wealth is not a business. It's a business, just like anything else. Are you ready to transform your life? This is a no-nonsense show helping immigrants like you create generational wealth, even while working full-time. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Socket Jane. Welcome back, my Great to Wealth listeners. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce to you Scott Royal Smith. I was telling Scott I love his middle name. Uh, There's royalty in the name itself, so you know it can't be wrong. And Scott, uh, Scott has an interesting background, and we'll go into uh, details of that. But really what he is, is he takes a lot of the hassles away from you as an investor. I mean, a lot of you listening to the show have told me uh, day in and day out that you don't have enough time. You know, getting your entity structures is hard enough. Now talk about the taxes and talk about nonprofits, talk about all the different strategies that you have. And um, hey, Socket, can you help me find the best lawyer, uh, the best CPA, the best this, the best that, right? And yes, I have uh, a lot of that offerings already. And uh, those of you who are plugged into our network know that we we do provide uh, those resources that we have vetted. But Scott's really a person who is a one-stop shop, right? He's going to be one guy or gal on his team, depending upon who you talk to, where they're going to be helping you define your strategy. And then they have in-house resources to actually implement it. It's a very powerful model. Again, not not every model is for everybody, but we're like, you know what, let's just understand that model. Let's understand Scott's story and see uh, see how what advantages you may have by going to a single entity versus versus farming it out. Scott, with that said, buddy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Sagan. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome, man. Awesome. Scott, uh, before we launch your introduction uh, and your story, I want to ask a question. What does the word migrate to wealth mean to you? Migrate to wealth to me means it's a movement towards freedom. That wealth is like gas that we need in the car to go on the road trip of life. Many of us made the mistake of thinking gas was the purpose of life. Yeah. And it's really the road trip. And if we can migrate towards the thinking of remembering that it's actually about the road trip, then wealth will become an alignment for us. My God, Scott, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal it, buddy. Uh, that was actually very powerful. I like that. Thank you again for, uh, for sharing your view. So, Scott, as you reflect on what you just said, what has been your journey into wealth? Help us understand when you were 2, 20, whenever you started your journey. I have no idea when you started your journey, went into wealth. Whenever you started, what was your perspective of wealth at that time? And then how did you form your journey? And then where you are right now on that wealth journey? Started when I was very young. I was pushing lawnmowers in Houston, Texas nice. as a kid and would save all the money that I had earned cutting grass. Didn't know what I was saving money for. I just knew that saving money was important yeah. and that people that had money had a tendency to be respected and also seemed to be able to have some additional magic that the people that without money didn't have. And so it became important to me to say, I want to be a person that knows about how to create money. And I bought my first business and commercial building for $10,000 in back taxes while I was actually in law school during the second year. And I rehabbed that business and the building to be able to graduate from law school without debt and continued to invest in real estate after that time. While I was practicing as a litigation attorney suing insurance companies, as it turns out, insurance companies are great at collecting premiums and even better at denying coverage, especially when things get expensive. And I decided that I really wanted to live a life that was extraordinary. I was reading Tim Ferriss at the time, and I was like, wow, you know, there's really something big shooting, worth shooting for, which is having this thing of money and being able to really work for like a lifestyle. So that's what real estate investing and business really became for me was saying, well, how can I do this, accomplish the wealth that I want to create and go climb Mount Kilimanjaro and go spend a month in the rainforest with the Yawanawa people? and be able to go backpack the PCT. Uh, And this is what uh, came for me was the struggles and being able to learn business and wealth and how all of those things had to work together over more than a decade. And then other people started asking me to be able to help build for them what I had built for myself. And that's what Royal Legal Solutions is the child of. It's the extension of all of the things that I needed to build for myself with the team members, the systems and the processes, all of the reporting and everything that's needed to become the CEO of a wealth building company that's built and managed for me that I only need to go to 
just a few meetings a year to be able to manage my wealth. So that that's interesting, Scott. Let's go deeper into that, right? Because I think there's a big myth there that you that you just uh, talked about busting, and you, you did you did prove that myth was not true for yourself. Because wealth building, as people look at it, they're like, you know, we need to be actively involved. It's a lot of work. Yeah, there may be a lot of work you may have to put together in the in the upfront portion. But as you look back. When you said that two to three meetings a year, give people that perspective a little bit. Was that, is that how you, you planned your business around your wealth building around that? Or that was an outcome of something you did? So give, us, give me that perspective. So Steve Jobs grows Apple, right? He grows it into a massive company. How does he do that? He's not out building all of the products, watching everything that happens there, right? There's high levels of intelligence that comes from the mind that we know of businesses around systems, processes, reporting, checklists, and these things that allow us to be able to know it will run in a predictable way right. once those are set in place, as long as I have the right people there. The same thing is true in a business as it is in wealth building. The mistake a lot of people make is they think wealth in creating wealth is not a business. It's a business, just like anything else. The reason why you think it's so hard is because you've probably never started a business. Mm. And so you don't actually have all of the training that it takes of how to work with the people and set up the systems and the processes and the strategy and the reporting and the meeting structure that's actually effective for running a business. This is why it's so important to be able to accelerate that path by somebody being able to build for you as much of your business as you possibly can. And that way you don't have to learn everything from the ground up. So that's interesting. I love that because I'm all about compressing timelines. But how do, how do people get comfortable with that, Scott? Kind of like, uh, and we'll talk, we'll talk real estate as an example, right? Because you, I mean, what I'm saying, I know it's not true, but I keep hearing that all the time. Well, I want control on my real estate, right? Or I want control on this, or I want control on that. I want to touch and I want to feel. And then at the same time, when we're talking about touching a business two to three times a year, I'll just use your words, seems like somebody else is managing day to day, somebody else is having more control. Yes, I'm, I'm the owner on the paper, but I'm not necessarily controlling anything. Is that true? Is, uh, do, you feel, do you feel that same pushback from people that you're talking to? Or, 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 or there, is there something more to that conversation? Active businesses, if you have like customers you're having to sell a product to, require high levels of touch because there's all types of shipment that has to happen, packaging, customer right. complaints, modifying your marketing and everything that happens here. If you structure your wealth correctly, it should be incredibly boring, mm. meaning that it doesn't require a lot of time and attention right. associated with it. As a CEO, you're always the one that's making the decisions. So what is the responsibilities of the people that work for you? Well, their job is to ensure all the filings happen on time, the yearly paperwork happens, that needs to happen for public information reports right. or LLC filing, that they're submitting to you the reports that says, here's your income and projections. Here's our recommendations for what types of deductions or tax shelters that you should be looking at. Here's the report of your portfolio performance. By the way, it looks like you have X amount of like excess cash that we would either want to shelter inside of some yeah. type of entity or perhaps we want to make a, some type of investment and in syndication inside of something boring, maybe like self-storage units that can pay 20 to 30% annual returns and huge tax benefits on top of that. Yeah. And then in this way, you actually, after the system is built and the machinery is running with your legal structuring, your state planning is put in place, then all there is is that most is quarterly reporting about what is your, how is your income projections looking? How much yeah. extra cash do we have? What investments do we need to make or what modifications do we need to make to your estate plan? There's actually just not that much of decisions that need to get made. If everything is already being managed, that's all like the boring tactical stuff that's repetitive, but it has to all be done correctly. Because if all of the details of these things aren't done correctly, a single lawsuit can wipe you out. A single audit can have huge adverse tax consequences. A single car accident can be catastrophic to you and your family's future. So you use professionals that have a very disciplined system and processed and high detailed 
way of making sure all of those things are taken care of and everything mm -hmm. stays legal and it stays mm -hmm. done correctly. And simply you make decisions that are strategic around what do I want to accomplish with my wealth? And it's either going to be more cash flow or I want a higher net worth. Yeah. Or I can find that I need more depreciation because of my tax benefits. There's just not that many decisions truly correct. that need to get correct, made. Correct. And I love what you said there, Scott, is that most people think wealth building has to be exciting, right? Something that they can talk at, you know what happened? Uh, versus it's actually a very boring activity. Once you put all the structures in place, right? Once you put all the processes, systems in place, I think that's really the kicker here because we're saying is you're not going to invest. It's not like a stock market more for the most people uh, where you're trading day in and out, right? When you're buying a storage unit, you're buying a storage unit or you're investing in a storage unit. You're not actively managing it. Somebody else is managing it for you because especially when we're talking about syndications. So one thing I think what, we're not, what I want to clarify here is what we're talking about here is creating wealth passively without with your, your involvement on two, four, six hours a year, whatever, how, how much ever it is, it's probably going to be different for different people, but it's not day-to-day -day activity management. Is that true, Scott? I just want to make sure that we can clarify that for people. Yeah, that's right. It's The truth is, is what you need is you need a team that can get back to you within one business day if something happens that says, mm -hmm. I need an answer. And right, and you need that team to typically go towards. And right now, we have all of that set up to go directly towards the paralegal team. And it says, awesome. well, what happens if the paralegal doesn't know about the ninety-eight percent of the issues that they can handle right within one day? Well, then we escalate it to an attorney meeting, and the attorney right. will know. If the attorney doesn't know, then it comes to me. If it's a tax issue, we bring in CPAs. If it's some type of business, we'll bring in the MBAs. If it's some type of intelligence and financial uh, planning our finan strategic financial or investment analysis that needs to happen, that's when we bring in the CFO people to it. Because the reality is, is how much do you need to be managing your wealth is if you move your investment from 30% return per year to 32, mm -hmm. that's not nearly as important as raising top line revenue by focusing your time and attention inside of your business and actually creating more capital right. or getting out of the money game completely and enjoying the road trip because it's not about how much gas you have and how much gas you can accumulate in life. It's about right. enjoying the road trip. But your best bet in getting more gas is drilling, right? Let somebody else make sure to manage what you already have there, optimize True. it to the best you can, and then True. figure out how to make more money if you need <laughs> to make more money. And if you don't, for the love of God, stop working for more money. It won't do anything for you. Get on the road trip. Scott, that's such, a, that's such a wise word, man, because I think I've lived my life with that now. I used to be that tweet. Uh, I used to be the guy who loved the corporate job and took pride in working 20 hours a day, right? Uh, that I used to wear as a badge of honor. And very soon I realized I don't have to work for 20 hours a week, a day. I could actually work 20 hours a month or 20 hours a year if I structure it properly. And I think to your point about the road trips are very important than the gas and how much gas do you accumulate. It all really is not, it's not worth it if you're not taking any road trips, right? So the, the gas is there for a reason and let's figure out how to use that for a reason. So Scott, when you're assembling these teams, when you're, when you're becoming strategic advisors for somebody, how do you, who is, who all is on, on the team? I think you briefly answered that question already uh, in the last few minutes of what, what you talked about different team members. Uh, but if you were to say that, hey, you know what, who needs to be for you to get those, uh, your wealth building down to two to four hours a year conversations or, or effort, who does, who, who do you need on your team? Yeah. So in terms of expectations, right, typically for anybody that's making over $150,000 a year and paying more than $20,000 a year in taxes is somebody who we consider qualified that we can make a significant impact for. Yeah, Many of our clients are making much more than that, making millions of dollars a year, and we've saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars off their tax bill. So yeah. the, way, the, the range of people that we're able to help is very, very large. What we've done is for the very first time in history is taking what are all of these strategies that previously just the wealthy were able to use and then be able to have those be available to a much wider audience. The reason that most people haven't heard of any of this stuff before 
of how do I strategically use private foundations or maybe S corporations or difference between retirement accounts, what types of investments are going to give me, what types of depreciation to set offset different types of income. It's simply because we're the first company to really specialize uh, in this area to get so deep, much further than any of what would be the competitors that I know of in any event. And uh, what you need to be able to do it is to be able to accomplish this. And the reason that you've probably struggled with this so far in life is because um, you really need paralegals, attorneys, CPAs, MBAs, and CFO uh, brains. And then you need them all to be synthesized together. Because just because you have hired those individual people in your life, what you know is they'll all start to disagree with each other and they don't really understand how the puzzle pieces are supposed to fit together, right. nor do they probably really understand the business itself. Remember, investing is a business. Real estate investing is a very niche and difficult kind of business to be able to run correctly on the wealth building side of things. So the, the reason that you've struggled so far is it requires deep knowledge it also requires all of the skill sets and it requires skill sets of people that have actually made money in this way for themselves to be working together to be appropriately knowledged inside of real world scenarios to be able to know how things need to work correctly. And that's why everybody's so frustrated. Yeah, I can see that. So Scott, when, and I, I like disagreements because I think in disagreements is where you find the opportunities. So when your CFA is disagreeing with your legal structure because a variety of reasons of how they think about things differently, how do you bring the resolution to that conversation? Because they could be a deadlock. So how do you, what, what, what's the comfort for the client saying that, you know what, these two individuals, let them talk in their way, which is great, but there is an interpreter and then there is a coach for you who can help you streamline the two conversation and make sure that these two agree, according to including other people as well, in your best interest. How does that work? So this is a problem that why I had to in-house all of my team members that work with all of, all of my clients as Royal, and Royal mm -hmm. Legal Solutions. It's because we actually, it, it wasn't one-off conversations. It required actually building relationships between them to be able to deeply understand each other's uh, fields of study to be able to understand why we would or wouldn't recommend a certain thing or what is or isn't possible in different situations. I think that it's, from my experience, and I would offer this to anybody listening to this in your experience, is that outside of being able to work with a company like mine, you're actually left in the position of having to be able to decide on what's yeah. happening between these two professionals. They don't have the time or the inclination to really figure out the problem. And you probably don't really want to pay them to figure out the problem at three to $500 an hour. So right. what it means is you end up having to study the issue and then go to them with the solution. And that's why we're able to get things down to be so much more efficient, cost effective and streamlined in terms of time for any of our clients is because we've done the years and years of all working together to be able to say, nope, this is exactly how all of the puzzle pieces need to get to fit together for the build. You just need to tell us where you want to go, what's important to you. And then we're able to set those objectives, build one cohesive strategy amongst all of the team members. Uh, together and then it runs like gravy smoothly yeah i love love that scott that makes sense and scott when you're working with your clients let's say someone who's a w2 employee and they want to save taxes i mean that's probably one of the biggest one people are always thinking about they're not thinking about asset protection they're not thinking about legal structures that's all secondary like i don't want to pay and the example you used was if you're making 150k and you're paying 20,000 over 20,000 dollars in taxes, which is over 30% tax return, uh, over 20% tax uh, ta tax tax bracket, uh, which is again highly unheard of because most people think that paying 30, 40, 50% is normal, right? So, what's the biggest concern that they have in working with someone like you, and and how do you how do you have them get over that 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 friction point? Yeah, so. Yeah, it's any anybody that's making over one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year or paying more than twenty k in taxes is somebody we can deliver a huge win for. Some people will come to us and say, "Well, I'm already paying zero dollars in taxes," and it's like, "Great, well then you you've already implemented the things that we know about about right. how to get there, right?" And it's like, then we don't. What would you like from me? It becomes <laughs> the question. So, you know, the really the biggest challenge that I face now, it's really different than the challenges I faced before. The challenges I faced before was all of like the learning 
of what are all the different types of issues that the right. different types of asset classes and different states and different state and federal taxes come up with. We've worked through all of those. The issues that we actually have now is people don't really believe. They don't really believe that it's possible to make yourself uh, anonymous in terms of the ownership of your companies and right. your uh, assets. They don't really believe that it's possible to create generational wealth that can bypass the court system and go direct you to your family so it doesn't get caught up in probate. They don't believe that you can really make 20 to 30% returns on your investments plus 180% bonus depreciation that offsets you know, your taxes to drive your taxes down to zero or mm -hmm. that you can use private foundations to shelter 30% of your wealth uh, from taxes and grow it like a super IRA yeah. account because it's so far outside of the knowledge of the average person that they say, well, how can I do it? And it's like, well, how do you think the billionaires are doing it? This is what they're doing. Right. You just haven't heard of it before. And all you have to do is to come join us. We'll do it all for you. We'll maintain it all for you. I'll know it's all be done correctly. And uh, and we guarantee it. Uh, we guarantee the results. We've worked with over 2,000 clients over the last 10 years. At this point in the company's growth, we're only looking to bring on um, the right people uh, and the right partners. We're not looking to scale big. We're actually really happy staying small. Um, my people are really wanting to prioritize their really focused yeah. attention in their work, but also living the life that they want to with their families. And we see it as like, we live our lives and we also are of service to other people to help them to be able to enjoy the things that we've spent many, many years figuring out for ourselves. Perfect. Well, uh, Scott, so what's the process look like for someone who wants to work with you? Um, so if somebody's ready to jump, well, help us paint a picture of from, from start to when they're, when the strategy gets starts to get implemented. What does the process look like, Scott? No, so first thing is just going to royallegalsolutions.com and watching the video. It's on the homepage there. It provides all of the details of um, how all the asset protection, the estate planning, the tax strategy, the portfolio analysis, the meeting structures, the support systems, and how all of those things work, right? This will give you a great idea about like what does it actually take to build a wealth building company and have it done yeah. correctly. And it'll also help you see why in the world have you found it so difficult. And it's because you'll actually get to see is this is what it really takes um, right. to be able to to do that. And that's that homepage video. If it feels right to you to have a follow-up conversation, then the best thing to do is to schedule right underneath that video. There's a calendar link and that links directly to my legal team. So you never will talk to a salesperson at Royal Legal Solutions. We always would just have you meet directly with the professional team. And that first phone call is to just ensure that you're qualified for somebody that we can deliver huge wins for. We're not looking to take anybody's money or do business with anybody that we're not able to do a big win for. So we want to make sure that you're qualified. We want to make sure that what about what questions you may have for us to be able to ensure that we can pair you with the right materials. So that way you can know that you're having a good fit and from the very beginning as we only take on so many slots we're really committed to making sure that every relationship is a home run um, and otherwise just not um, taking on the relationship awesome. at this point. And typically it's about a two to six week build time, depending upon how complex your structure is to be able to take you from wherever you're at, whatever you have right now, wherever you're living, whatever type of assets you are, it doesn't matter. We're able to, in two to six weeks, to be able to do a full build of all of your asset protection, your estate planning, all of your tax strategy, analyzing all of your portfolio, helping you strategically plan what investments you need to make next so you know exactly what, how much money you need to push and to what kind of deal to give you what kind of cash flow and what kind of net worth benefits and what kind of tax uh, write-offs. And then after that, it's typically just quarterly meetings or as often as you'd like. But most of our clients are really happy to meet just each quarter or twice a year. Got it. Perfect. Now, this is actually very helpful. I think I would um, highly encourage everyone to at least uh, take a look at the video. Right, and set up a phone call. It's free, and and you'll learn. If nothing else, you'll walk away with some more knowledge than you had before, and um, and on the on the on the chances that that you want to engage someone like Scott, it'll give you a little bit more information on how that company can help you. Scott, I think we can. You and I can talk at length, man, because that's how I built my wealth. Which is, I don't want to be actively managing it. I want to make money where I want to put my effort towards things that are more top line heavy. Which is, what can I do to make more, mm -hmm. do more drilling, in your words rather than worrying about collecting the gas, right? So I think I love that. So this is great, Scott. We're going to shift gears here in the interest of time. Scott, if, as you reflect on your journey in life, there is a 20-year-old Scott somewhere who's listening to this podcast. What's one insight you can give to that 20-year-old Scott that could hopefully 
change the migration, their migration trajectory into health? What I would tell them is to relax. Mm. Just relax. In fact, all of the things that whatever it is that you want is actually just going to develop in the time that it's going to develop. But just relax, stay focused. There's nowhere to get to. There's just relaxing and enjoying and developing in the time that it takes. I, I, lo- I love that uh, one, man. I mean, I can see it in your demeanor. You seem fairly relaxed yourself. So I know you're probably living that, uh, living that mantra already. So thank you for sharing that. Scott, now we're going to take a little bit of uh, higher perspective, ab- more abstract view of the world. Where do you feel that humanity as a whole needs to migrate to in the next few decades? We have to migrate to the consciousness that we're all in this together. We have to. This idea that we're all separate individuals or separate countries and that what I take you don't have is all leading just to war and destruction. We have to come to a place where we realize that we're all in this game together. Right. And until we do that, nothing is ever going to get solved. Very true. Very true. With all the war and destruction that's happening in the world, you could see that if if you start to look at the world your way, uh, it could be a very different world. So thank you again, Scott, for sharing that perspective. Scott, as if somebody wants to reach out to you, learn more about you, I think you already gave uh, your website. Uh, could you repeat those resources? Yeah, best thing to do is just go to royallegalsolutions.com, watch the video uh, that's on the homepage there, and schedule a meeting. Talk for 15 minutes with a team member. See if you're qualified for somebody that we can make some massive wins for. And it's just at royallegalsolutions.com. Awesome, Scott. Thank you again. I, I will, we'll, we'll make sure that... That link is included in the show notes, royallegalsolutions.com. Thank you again for your time. I really appreciate that. I think the topic that you're trying to cover, a lot of people take five, seven, eight years to wrap their arms around. And uh, what was interesting was you can get them, you can get people there in three to two to six weeks, depending upon how complex the assets are. So compressing the timeline is the game, is the major reason why we started this podcast. And someone like Scott could definitely help you get there. So I would definitely encourage you to take a look at what Scott has to offer. Uh, And then for all the listeners who are actually uh, listening to this part of the show, that essentially means you stayed with us for the entire show. So something in that episode hopefully got you moving uh, in a positive direction and it triggered something in you that you want to make positive action. So thank you again for listening in, for tuning in. The show would not be possible without your involvement. This show is for our listeners. And, uh, and hopefully we are, we're adding value to you. If there's uh, something specific that you want to discuss about asset protection, other things that we talked about today, uh, just drop me a note, you know where to find me, and then we'll make sure that the next episode, uh, next few episodes are structured around those. Well, thank you again for other listeners. Thank you again, Scott. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It's great to be here. If you got value from this episode, you might consider sharing this content with a friend. But most importantly, be sure to take action on what you've learned. One way you can take the next step is to connect directly with Socket on an investor call. That link is waiting for you in the show notes below.